Welcome back to State of Tech. We're going to take you through our basic setup guide of how to add an email address onto the iPod Touch now that you've created all of your Apple ID accounts and signed into the iPod for the first time. We're going to open up the settings application and then we're going to come down here in the menu until we see mail contacts and calendars. Tapping on that is going to bring us into this menu and you can see we're already signed up at the top into an account called iCloud. Now if I tap add account it's going to bring me into the option here where I can see all of the supported accounts and then I have other down at the bottom. So I can add in another iCloud account, I can do an exchange if I have an exchange email through my business. That's where you would typically see exchange emails is when you're working for a company and they've set up their email through exchange. Google and Yahoo and AOL and Outlook.com are all free email providers that you can sign up for by visiting their websites and getting a free email address catered to your name or any sort of screen name that you want to use. And other is going to be where we tap in here and we can add in our own mail account. Say if we're self-hosting our mail, we have our own email address. We can go ahead and add it this way. And we have some options here for adding contacts and calendar accounts such as LDAPs and card DAVs and even subscribe calendars. Uh, these options here in the other are going to be more for your advanced user for mainly typically card DAV and LDAPs are usually for business accounts. If you wanted to add in your um, email account and contacts that way, you can do so in this menu. But we're going to assume here that you're going to add in a basic email that you have via either Google, Yahoo, Outlook, or AOL. The process is going to be the same even if you're using an Exchange or another iCloud account. Um, now the way to do this is go ahead and tap on the provider that you're using. For this example, we're going to use Google. Tap on Google and it's going to take us into the next screen for our setup process. Here we're going to enter in our name, email, password, and a description. So tap on the name, go ahead and enter your name, and I'm going to do so here. In the email address, we're going to enter in our email. Typically it's um, your screen name, whatever it is, at gmail.com. Um, so go ahead and enter in your Gmail uh, email right here and then we'll go on to the next step. Now the next area is going to be our password which is a required element as well. So go ahead and enter in the password that you have for your email address and once you've done that now the next step is to add the description. Um, it's already automatically added in a description for us. The description that it added in is a basic one based upon the email account that we're setting up. So if it was Yahoo it would automatically add in Yahoo. Um, Outlook.com would automatically add in Outlook. We can leave this default description. So if I wanted to leave it as Gmail, I can do so. But if I wanted to rename it, I can erase it and go ahead and give it whatever sort of description I want to. This is going to be the keyword that we see out in the main menu. Keep in mind, on my email address, the reason that you don't see at Gmail is that the email address that I'm currently using is hosted through Gmail. So it's going to work the same way. So you can set up either an at Gmail address or if your email is hosted through Gmail, you can use that as well. Hit next, and it's going to verify all of our information. Once it's done that, we'll be presented with some options. With Gmail, we can sync mail, contacts, calendars, and notes. So if we were to sign in with this Gmail account on a different device, we would have the same email, contacts, calendars, and notes across each one of those devices. And any changes that we made on gmail.com or on our iPhone, iPod, or iPad it would be able to be reflected on these as well. For this example, all I want is to use mail, so I can go ahead and disable the contacts, calendars, and notes. They'll still exist if I have them on Gmail servers, but I only want to bring in the mail on my iPod. So now I'm going to tap Save. It's going to add my account. The account's been added. And now you see my accounts tab now shows iCloud and Gmail. And below each one of my account descriptions, I get a little preview of what's being synced. So again, for Gmail, all I have is mail. But if I tap on that, I have some account settings that I can choose to re-enable contacts, calendars, and notes. Or I can delete my account altogether. Now, one thing to keep in mind with Gmail is that it doesn't delete messages by default. It archives them. So for a Gmail account, you'd want to come back here into your account tab, come into the advanced section, and see where it says move discarded messages into in the very middle of the screen. You'd want to use that for the deleted mailbox instead of archived. 
If you like to archive your messages, that's totally up to you. But your typical function that you like to use for email is typically deleting them when you're done instead of archiving them. So if you want them to be deleted, go ahead and choose the deleted mailbox. Now that's for Gmail only. I've only experienced that with any Gmail account where I have to move it from the archived position into the deleted mail position. So now if I come into my mail application out here on my home screen, come over here in the side menu, now you'll see I have Gmail, and if I tap on that, it's loaded in all of the emails that I have pertaining to that particular email account. And then I can come back and I can view iCloud here as well. So that is how you're going to add a new email address into your iPod. And you can add in again, if we go back into the settings, you can add in any one of these email accounts here listed in this menu. Or if you'd rather manually do it, you can go ahead and set up an other account. For more information on how to set up your iPod or your iPhone or your iPad, be sure and visit stateoftech.net.